French painter Eugène Delacroix wrote in 1874 to his journal, I saw a Chinese wallpaper when I was at Maigret's house with Madame de Forge. Maigret told us that we have nothing to equal their skill in producing vast colors. And he says that when he tried to make a sample of part of the pink background, it turned a dreadful color in a very short time. He also said that all the delightful birds and butterflies were done by hand. Chinese wallpapers are difficult to categorize. They find themselves between fine and decorative arts, between Asian and European style. They were made using Chinese materials, techniques and motives, but were intended exclusively for the export to Western markets. They have been exported from China to Europe via the East India companies in, eight, in the 18th and 19th centuries. Chinese wallpapers were extremely expensive trading goods and only members of the high nobility were able to purchase them. Until today, a major part of Chinese wallpaper can still be found in situ in historic houses, elegant apartments, and summer residences all over Europe. For my, my master thesis, I was searching for examples of Chinese wallpaper in French public collections. I found 16 complete interior decorations 27 individual panels, and also eight fragments of Chinese wallpaper in collections all over France, as we see here. During my research, I had the great chance to col of collaborating with conserv conservational scientists from the Center of Research and Conservation of French Museums in Paris, the C2 RMF. Together, our aim was to decode some of the fabrication secrets of Chinese wallpaper. My research was thus a part of the CTRMF's two-year project that focuses on the identification and the recognition of Chinese papers in French public collections. The integration of my work into this project allowed me, on the one hand, to gain a better access to the examples of Chinese wallpaper. I was, for instance, uh, able to analyze them both historically and stylistically, not only through reading, but also in situ and in the studios. On the other hand, uh, with my friend's colleagues, we conducted scientific analysis using the C2 RMF's state-of-the-art technologies. But first of all, we started to analyze the paper its surface and the bright colors with the naked eye. We were able to confirm what Eugène de la Croix argued already. Most contours of butterflies, birds, and flowers are done by hand. The intact luminosity, liveliness, and the freshness of, the, of two centuries old water-based paintings intrigued us for their remarkably good conditions. Within our project guidelines, we had deliberately chosen visual, non-destructive techniques of measurement and analysis to avoid any taking of samplings and interference with the original paper and the colors of the Chinese wallpapers. The smaller wallpaper fragments from the Museum of Decorative Arts in Paris proved themselves to be very suitable objects of analysis for this study. They are of relatively small size, which facilitates their manipulation. In addition, some of these wallpaper fragments possess parts of embossment, splits, fractures, or even legs, which uncover and make visible to us deeper layers of the Chinese wallpaper surface, as we see here also. This part. In this regard, I'd like to thank Veronique de la Hougue, 
curator of the museum's wallpaper department for her help and cooperation. Our aim, finally, was to decode, analyze, and depict the three-dimensionality of the Chinese wallpaper. These works, as most graphic arts, tend to be studied rather on a two than a three-dimensional level. Um, <clears throat> therefore, we decided to make use of the new numerical 3D microscop microscopy technology. We used the Herox KH8700 microscope, which possesses a technology able to create multi-focus images. These images can give us an idea of the paper structure and the morphology of the paper surface. We were positively surprised and appreciated the performance of the Herox technology that we see here. One can control and take images at any moment during the course of treatment and results are also obtained very rapidly in about a few minutes. Here um, we see, for instance, a 3D image of a Chinese wallpaper's tattered edge. We can clearly see the different superposed layers of paint uh, of paper. Here one, there another, and there. We suppose this assemblage of paper layers to be a mix of Shuan papers, papers based on bamboo, mulberry, or pith fibers. These papers are until now frequently, uh, frequently used in Chinese graphic arts. Moreover, these papers serve as consolidating support and play an important role in the traditional conservation and restoration process. Here, we see a model elaborated by English paper conservator Susan Ketcher. She restored a complete series of Chinese wallpaper in her studio in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London and distinguished different paper layers. As you know, the Shuan paper we see here is mainly made from the blue sandalwood barks fibers and is sometimes also mixed with rice straw fibers. It is smooth, white, and has specific properties very suitable for lining and backing paintings and calligraphy. Furthermore, the Herox microscope, as it is also a classical microscope, helped us to create images of high magnification. Yet, the great benefit of this technology comes from the three-dimensionally reconstructed images. So here, image of very high magnification, and here we can see um, a three-dimensionally reconstructed image in the Herox uh, system, in the Herox program. Uh, <clears throat> these images, though, uh, thus, can be turned and analyzed from different angles. We were therefore able to obtain information, for instance, on the thickness of the different color layers or could even measure the width and length of cracks, fractures, and splits. The analyzed wallpapers from the Museum of Arts and Crafts in Paris consist of three distinct components. A paper base, uh, at first, a, a white coating, and a uh, color code. Paper base, white coating, and then the different color layers. Next, I want to give you a short explanation of this uh, Herox technology or technique. The numerical apparatus takes multiple pictures on different heights. Each of these pictures has a very small depth of field to create separated, sharp images. And afterwards, the Herox program compiles all these uh, images and reconstructs with the data a three-dimensional image, 
with a great depth of field and also a great volume. This three-dimensional image can then be freely manipulated. Here, for instance, the 3D image helped us to distinguish at least four different superposed color layers. The pink, Bordeaux, yellow, and black color superposed. This finding has been facilitated by the possibility to turn the images in all directions, take measures at any time, and highlight also certain points individually. This allowed us to measure the thickness of the color layers, the paper, and the white preparation. Every time we were able to access the paper through cracks, splits, or lags in the color layers. We measured approximately 100 micrometers for the thickness um, in, the white, in the white coating, and each of the different color la layers were about 10 to 20 micrometers thick. Well, yet we have to keep in mind that every technology has its weaknesses and its limits. In our case, we were limited to the analysis of smaller wallpaper fragments since the microscope was fixed and did not allow to reach every part of a big wallpaper surface. In this uh, context, the technology was also limited to the analysis of movable objects. Wallpapers installed in situ remained inaccessible for the moment. Further, sometimes we were not able to create a sharp 3D image which was due to the optical, optical adjustments of lighting, contrast, etc. It needs a trained optical scientist to obtain good results with the complex apparatus and the Herox software. But also, we have to stay realistic. The Herox KH8700 is a high-performing numerical microscope, yet it can only reconstruct visible parts of the wallpaper surface, and therefore some areas of the 3D images can be occasionally blurred or not very sharp, as we see here, for example. This is when the microscope uh, does not probably see them. But in general, uh, we have to say that the Herox technology is reliable, flexible, fast, and performing for the analysis of the morphology and structure of Chinese wallpaper. Yeah. In the scope uh, of future research, we would therefore like to use the numerical 3D microscopy again, but this time also on bigger panels of Chinese wallpaper and in situ in historic interiors using, for example, a mobile fixture for the Herox uh, microscope. At the moment, we are completing our study using also classical methods of analysis like scientific image, imagery and X-ray fluorescence. We hope that way to obtain more information on the preparation coating and the pigments used in the Chinese wallpaper. Furthermore, it is certainly of high interest for us to compare our work with other institutions and specialists of Chinese paper and Chinese wallpaper worldwide. In Germany, for instance, Friederike Wappenschmidt worked already in the 1980s on an exhaustive history of Chinese wallpaper in Europe. Moreover, in the Netherlands, from 1993 to 1998, the Limburg Conservation Institute organized an international training program for the restoration of three examples of Chinese wallpaper. And finally, during the last few years, the British National Trust and also the Victoria and Albert Museum in London studied in detail the British collections of Chinese wallpaper. Our aim would thus be not only to advance studies on Chinese wallpaper, but also to bring together and exchange the results within an international researcher's uh, network. 
Well, and at the end, um, I would like to thank my professors from the Ecole du Louvre and all my colleagues from the CTRMF uh, who helped me with the study and with my work, especially also Marine Page and Dominique Robsis. And I would also like to thank the ADA Technical Committee for giving me the great chance to be here today. And, um, well, also a big thank to my family and Alex, who are watching me on live stream right now. <laughs> thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>